So the doctrine of imputed righteousness goes like this. It's like you get saved. You accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. The righteousness of Christ is imputed to you. In other words, it's like a magical cloak that you put on. When the Lord looks at you, he doesn't see your sins. He sees his righteousness. Okay, so that's basically how it goes. And I would say that that is not true because the epistles of Paul itself, we have allusions to the fact that's not the case. Paul wrote to the churches. He rebuked these people for their sin. He's like, if you don't stop doing this, then you will not inherit the kingdom of God. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 and 10 is a list of sins. He says, if any of you do any of this or anything like it, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. Remember, he's talking to the church here. He's not talking to unbelievers. He's talking to those who supposedly have the imputed righteousness of Christ. So that doesn't make sense, does it? Same with the book of Galatians. He's talking to the believers, to the church in Galatia, to those who are already saved per se. And he says in Galatians chapter 5, verse 19 through 21, anybody who commits fornication, variation, emulation, adultery, idolatries, heresies, envyings, uncleanness, lasciviousness, drunkenness, murderings, sedition, sorcery, prostitution, and lying, and anything like this, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. So where's the imputed righteousness of Christ there? That's not to mention Revelation chapters 2 and 3, when it says that Jesus is speaking to the churches in Asia seven different churches. Most of these churches, he rebukes them for their sin, and he says, if you do not repent, serious judgment will come upon you. That doesn't sound like salvation to me. That doesn't sound like the imputed righteousness of Christ to me, does it? 